Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. As we continue through the week, wrapping up the end of the week, it is Friday, and that means I'm together with my partners, Buddy and Bobby. Good to have you guys back in studio. Great always. to be back, always. always. Always a lot of fun. The focus is always the same, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in, and that is education information. We are, all work really hard to try to get great guests like we have today. We'll introduce in just a minute. Good content and information to really help you make wise decisions in and around your real estate. That's what we'll continue to do. Before we get started and introduce our guests, let me just remind you, if you're looking to buy a home or sell a home or navigate through this market, as you know, it's a really, really challenging market. You need to work with someone that is a professional, understands real estate. I've said it before, there's only about 10% of the population in the real estate world that understands it. Bobby is one of those. Contact her if you have any needs on, again, buying or selling. You can do that a couple different ways. One is uh, via email, bobby at bobbydecker.com, or you could text or call 650-346-5352. And also visit the website. Great website. You guys have got a lot of good information on that. Bobbydecker.com, B-O-B-B-I-D-E-C-K-E-R.com. On the financing side, if I could help you with any purchase, uh, refinance, or just trying to get an idea of what you could get approved for on this in the purchase market, and make sure you get approved and do it early before you even start looking for a home. 408-838-9060. All right, let's roll with the show. As uh, most of you know, again, um, we work really hard to have great guests on the show. Today is no exception, and our guest today is Kelly cromwell Cancellor. She's uh, with Farmers Insurance. She'll be covering the field of home insurance. And let me tell you, there is a lot to insurance today, the good, bad, and ugly. And uh, every time you finance and purchase a home, you need insurance. So she's going to kick us off. So, buddy, I should say, buddy, Bobby, I'm sorry. Yeah, Bobby. It's going <laughs> to cut You'll take me it out. From here. First thing in. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? Well, it, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly is just kind of how you can define insurance because they go mm. in and out of the market True. depending on conditions. If you heard, um, not to time stamp anything, but right now there's a big storm headed towards yes, a hurricane. That's right. And so there'll be floods and damage and wind and yada, yada, yada. So they, they do go in and out. And Kelly is just so knowledgeable. I attended a seminar that she gave, and I thought, wow, there's so much here that consumers don't know Mm -hmm. that Kelly can impart to them. And the one thing is that what you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. That can come back and bite you after you need to Mm -hmm. stake a claim and find out you're not covered. So, Kelly, welcome very much. Thank you for being our guest. Thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I've had my farmer's insurance agency since 2008. So I started in the down market and grew a business from scratch and um, in the top tier of agents uh, from farmers nationwide. Um, I take very high pride in my levels of customer service and the education, just like you guys are bringing to this podcast weekly about making sure that clients know what they're getting into. Um, and I really appreciate the fact that you guys have brought me on the air today. Now, so Kelly, Bobby mentioned that uh, just as she started out, that there's a lot of changes that are constantly occurring and uh, that you have a six bullet list of the most misunderstood insurance items. Um, yes. Can we put the, we'll put this list up eventually on the website, but for now, can you get us started with the different types of property, which, uh, and, and the effects of the insurance issues? Yeah. So there's an appropriate type of policy for every property owner, um, single family homeowners, multifamily homeowners, um, with rental units on their residence or just insuring rental properties in general, in general investment properties. Um, people have seasonal homes, um, secondary vacation homes. Um, and then a big one is definitely the vacant properties, uh, people that are either 
selling their property or they're flipping properties. And that's a real big, um, what's a good way to say this? People just don't understand that there's even a separate policy mm-hmm. for that type of risk. Um, builder's risk for reconstruction and renovation. Oh my goodness. I drove through Burlingame uh, two weeks ago and I sort of got half the houses in Ray Park are under construction, are completely being rebuilt. Um, so that's something that people don't understand. If they don't get a builder's risk policy, they may not have any insurance at all. Oh. Um, then condo policies, what they call HO6 formerly in the market, condos, townhouses, um, those are a very special type of policy. And that is something that we're running into issues all the time with um, because we have battles between the HOA and then those um, individual condo owners. Uh, and then the last one, which is kind of a hot topic for the market, is the Airbnbs and short-term rentals. That, again, is something that many, many, many um, preferred market carriers are not doing and are not insuring these claims um, when they come up uh, because they were not properly insured in the first place and they weren't disclosing this information um, to to their carriers. So we tend to have an issue with with those um, over time. Wow. There's a lot to learn there. <laughs> uh, well, well, we're done. Bye-bye, Kelly. Already yeah. I'm like, boy, whoa. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. We'll dive into this because what you said there, cer- uh, I certainly have some more questions about the some of those Airbnb and, you know, you know, some of these people that, uh, not off topic, but this is topic that, mm-hmm. you know, they purchase their home as a second home. They sell, they set, decide, let's, I'm going to start renting it or vice yeah. versa, yeah. right? Yeah. And they probably never think about, well, what's the difference between an owner occupied versus rental and all these other, there's so much to this, isn't well, there, Kelly? There is, Ke- Kelly, you know, we're going to go a little off topic because I don't think we should come back to this. I think she should jump into it uh. about the rentals and how that's affected, Kelly. I think that's something that these people should know because to get extra money, mm-hmm. they're just doing this, Joe. And then what if they fall down? Right. I mean, Kelly, run with that for a little bit. Absolutely. Um, with these rentals, whether you have just someone renting a room in your home, mm-hmm. there's a special endorsement on a homeowner's policy for wow. that. Um, if you're renting out, say, an in-law unit, um, there's a special endorsement on the policy for that. If you are, in fact, utilizing your home, a secondary home or a rental residence as a seasonal rental, like, for example, the Airbnbs and so forth. A lot of people do this up in Tahoe or have properties out by the beach, and they're just making, you know, an extra killing on this because they can rent it out for three, four hundred dollars a night. But they are so poorly insured because they don't understand the fact that they have this extra risk. You've got issues with vandalism. Um, that people come in, they stay the night, or maybe someone has a huge bachelor party at this great property out at the beach, and now everything is destroyed. Who's going to be responsible for that? Yeah. Is it going to be the people that rented it? Is it going to be the third mm. party in between, the VRBO, the Airbnb, or is it going to be the property owner? And we run into this problem where, you know, this could be a huge issue if you don't have the right insurance policy on it. And thankfully, I do have access to these specific policies um, and do have access to all these endorsements. I don't actually have to go outside of farmers for it, which is a really good thing that they know that they have a larger market that they have to tap into where some of these companies are just going to non-renew policies, Mm -hmm. deny claims. And the problem is it's the communication between the agency that they're working with and the customer. If the if the agent is not talking to their client about these risks and they're not having the opportunity to talk to them about what's going on with their properties, then there's a likelihood that there's going to be no communication at all and therefore no coverage at all. Wow. That's, so, what, that's where we have the biggest issue. Is let me, uh, so let me, along those same lines, we'll continue that. So let me just run a scenario by you. Let's say I own a home and it's registered and insured as a primary residence. And I decide, well, you know, a year or so later, I'm going to start renting out a little bit every once in a while or whatever. And then there's a fire or some damage based on people that I'm renting to, either temporarily or for a monthly basis. So is that okay. uh, under that scenario with the insurance company, would they cover that or that would be a problem, right? It, it could potentially be a problem mm-hmm. because it's not rated. So right. the risk is not rated properly. Hmm. And they could turn around and say, well, you did not disclose to us what you were doing in your home. Hmm. You've turned this into a commercial risk. You've turned this into a non-owner occupied risk. They could either, one, deny the claim flat out, two, put the contingency that they will pay the claim 
and then non-renew you, you know, that upcoming 60 or 90 days down the road um, and or give you the opportunity to say, OK, hey, we're going to be able to make a change to this policy and be able to move forward from there. But likely you're running with scenario one or scenario two. They're going right. to deny the claim or they're going to just non-renew you right after the claim is paid. Yeah. Well, we'll come back to this back and forth. Uh, we got just a couple of minutes left in the first segment. This is really, really good stuff. And uh, I hope those out there listening pass this along if you have others that are you know, renting homes or thinking about it or not having insured properly because there's a lot to this. So let's jump mm-hmm. back a little bit. So prior to insurance losses on property, especially water damage, um, Bobby had mentioned you know, the big storm coming in Texas. You know, who knows what's going to happen there? Um, mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is a, a big issue that we're running into, um, not only with farmers underwriting, but pretty much every other company out there. Um, we look at claims history. It's mm-hmm. just the same with your car insurance, is the same with your home insurance. We want to know what kind of risk we're taking on at the time of new business. And so what we do is we have a, a loss report run. And on the loss report, we'll find out what claims have been made on that property and also by the owner. And if a property itself has a water loss claim filed, they may or may not be eligible for insurance and insurance with a preferred company or have to go to a high risk market like a Lloyd's of London. Hmm. Um, three years, five years are usually a statutory um, time frame of what we're looking at as far as loss losses and claims. But when I have any client contact me. I let them know, contact me first before you call the 800 number to file a claim or do it online. I need to know what you're going to do so I can help you figure out your, one, any uh, repercussions for it, two, your overall cost, and three, what's it going to do for the long term of your property. Um, With the water losses, sellers and buyers are having problems with purchasing preferred carrier insurance, which have obviously the best rates because of these water losses. I had a client a couple years ago. He had bought a condo in Pacifica. He had a little situation with some water. I said, hey, go, go. Let me get you in contact with the company that will come out and see how much damage you've got first. Well, as I told him, I said, if you want to sell this house in the next three years, you're going to have that riding over you like a black cloud oh, yeah. for your for your new purchaser. And, and it's going to cause you a problem selling this property. Hold so on to that thought, Kelly, because I know this goes on because I heard you explain this at the seminar I went to. Yeah. And we need to take a break. So, Joe? Yeah, yeah. so hold on because there's a lot of good information to come. Uh, we're sitting speaking with Kelly Cornwell Kanzler. She is... Uh, with Farmers Insurance, sitting alongside Bobby and Buddy, we're talking about this today. Very important topic. This is Joe Kachar with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. We'll be back to continue in just a minute. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Bobby Decker is a recognized veteran of the real estate industry with 30 years of assisting clients to buy and sell property. Educating the public through her television programs, radio interviews, web streaming, websites, and newspaper articles helps people gain valuable knowledge that makes them better suited to accomplish their homeownership or sales goals. Ms. Decker is a vice president at today's Sotheby's International Realty. Part of the global family, with 660 offices in 47 countries, she provides extensive marketing resources and services to her clients that have a wide set of needs, from selling properties on the San Francisco Mid-Peninsula and Silicon Valley to trophy ranches and vacation properties in the Sierra Foothills. When clients have needs in other parts of America or the world, she can refer them to other Sotheby's International Realty or Sotheby's Auction House locations. Contact Bobby at bobbydecker.com. That's B-O-B-B-I-D-E-C-K-E-R.com. Or call 650-346-5352. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, sitting alongside Bobby and Buddy. The topic today is insurance, and uh, we're lucky to have a guest today, Kelly Carnwell 
Kanzler. She is with Farmers Insurance. She's kind enough to spend a little time with us, covering a lot of important information. And just before we were, uh, we took a break. Um, she was talking a little bit about some of these issues specifically to water damage. If you could kind of piggyback and continue that conversation, Kelly, and how important that is, and some of the things that people may not uh, know about when this happens or when they do file a claim of that sort. Right, absolutely. So what we were talking about right before the break is the owners of the properties need to know the short-term and long-term ramifications of filing these water claims. One being, obviously, it's going to be a claim on their record. Two, it's going to be an, it could be a potential issue if they go to put the property on the market and for the sellers to obtain insurance on that, on that property. And also it's going to relatively, in most cases, cause a premium increase, and they need to be aware of that too. Um, so a client of mine, we dodged a bullet uh, with a smaller water claim that, or a smaller water loss. We didn't end up filing a claim, but it worked out in their favor that it was a, it was a smaller out-of-pocket expense for them. They, had, they made the educated decision not to put the claim in through the insurance policy, and then they ended up turning around and needing to sell the property um, just maybe about 18 months afterwards and thankfully, there was no water claim that was sitting on that property uh, loss history. So when they did sell it, they didn't have that looming over the loss history for the buyers and allow it to be a quick turnaround and a sale for them. But that's really something that people need to be understanding about is if, they got, if they're going to want to sell this property, there's going to be a potential issue with, with getting the insurance for the buyers that are coming in. To that property. It, that is so correct. There was a nine hundred and fifty dollar claim on a property that I was selling, Joe, and that had been brought up, you know, on the seller's disclosure. Mm-hmm. Do you have you had any insurance claims whatsoever? And they brought that up, but for nine hundred and fifty dollars, they were not the buyers were not allowed to go back to the insurer that had that that insurance on that property at the time that that happened and had the owner known it was a cracked toilet joe just you know one of these things and um that's so cheap but Mm -hmm. for that amount of money you should have seen the scramble for an insurance carrier to uh cover it it was it was quite an experience and that's why i wanted you on kelly because consumers need to know that Mm -hmm. and they always say well why do we have insurance when we need them they're not there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And I think you mentioned to me that this is the mold is what they're worried about down the road. Is that correct? Um, that is definitely a concern uh, because if water goes untreated, if it mm-hmm. goes un- if, if it doesn't get fixed, then there is definitely going to be potential issues with mold. Um, I actually have a client right now um, that we're going between the HOA and his condo policy because there was a leak in his AC unit that went down through the backs of the walls into the garage um, and then ended up causing a mold problem. And unfortunately. That was a water issue that was on that property before he purchased it. So unfortunately, we're having to go back to the the sellers of the property and the agents that worked on that deal because it wasn't disclosed. And now there's thousands and thousands of dollars in damage from a water issue that farmers unfortunately had to deny because it was even it was a longstanding issue. It wasn't something that happened even while he was living there. Um, it happened prior to him even moving into the place. So unfortunately, it's going backwards into who was involved and who didn't disclose, and and it's and it's going to end up unfortunately turning into a but a bit of a sticky situation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but it did end up with mold as well wow. because of an unknown um, water leak, or who knew if there was a water leak? If the seller knew there was a water leak in that AC unit. Well, there's yeah, there's so much here, and I think, you know, kind of a funny note, not funny, funny, but it was ironic that. I did a couple of shows uh, several years ago specifically on mold, and I had mold experts on, mm-hmm. and I never got so many calls in my life. That's unbelievable. Right. We, we did that. I mean, did we do one too? Yes. I mean, Strack, the interest. Strack, he caught buddy I sat was, on, I the was on the jury. I was on the jury that this lady had gone on and on and on and on of trying to fight this problem uh-huh. with, against a HOA, the owner, in a, in a condo complex, uh-huh. and... I have six attorneys in the room. I mean, it was amazing. Man. And mm-hmm. and uh, it, it turned out to be so complicated with all the different people on <laughs> saying pros and cons about mold. Um, the case had a, I mean, the, the 
paying the attorneys had to be. <coughs> oh, attorneys uh, love that four letter thousands, word. Thousands of dollars. <laughs> it's so too much. Let's, let's switch over. What do yeah. you have, Joe? Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, move from water damage to the next thing we want to keep away from water, and that's electrical wiring, <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> the, <laughs> well, you don't those go those, those two together, we got a problem. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that, um, if you would, Kelly. Yeah. Absolutely. Happy to. So there's a big kind of stigma against knob and tube wiring when you're talking to a lot of the insurance companies and a lot of companies don't want to even touch the knob and tube wiring. Um, It's unfortunately really misconceived because the issue is not knob and tube wiring being a hazard. It's the issue of the fuse boxes versus circuit breakers and how much ampage you've got running through the house. You need to make sure you've got over 100 amps running through the house, regardless what type of service is going through that property. Hmm. But the fuse boxes are the issue, is, is the issue. The circuit breakers, as long as the panels have been updated, it doesn't matter what kind of, you know, if it's knob and tube or if it's any of the other types um, aluminum or anything else that's going through the house. You just want to make sure that you've got amps over 100 and you've got the circuit breakers because those when those fuses start to blow, it, it can cause such a huge problem. I don't know if you've ever been inside of a house that's had, you know, fuses go out mm-hmm. and you're running around the house and trying to, oh gosh, it's such a, <laughs> it's, it, it's very, very dangerous, very, very fast. So that's, that's the issue that, you know, people think it's the knob and tube wiring with farmers in particular because I can speak for the carrier that I primarily represent it's uh-huh. not an issue of the it's not the issue of the knob and tube wiring it's the issue of the fuses versus the circuit breakers how do you uh how do you determine do you actually send an inspector out to the home let's say someone's insuring a home right off right out of the gate they just purchased a home how do you know yeah. what what type of fuse boxes and what you're getting into or is that the appraiser how, how do you get that information um well for the most part you know we want to check with the the buyer of the okay. property, ask them, you know, do you know what's in it? Have you, you know, do you know when it was last updated? Um, you know, I obviously can easily look through photographs. If mm. I go out to the property, I can obviously check the service panels I and see. see what they've got. Um, but if the property is local enough, I like to just go out and see the property. Mm-hmm. Um, but with obviously the ad, <laughs> the the evolution of the internet you know everything is online i mean you just google the address and you've got 90% of everything that you need well let's hope it's um, accurate yeah <laughs> of course of course and that's why i usually like to ask for a copy of the appraisal right. cuz it's going to have more um more detailed information that Great. hopefully has been verified okay thanks <laughs> all right so let let me jump a little bit backwards of the uh, kind of associated with Bobby's dialogue about uh, uh, when clients are are uh, selling, buying and selling, and the the associated kind of uh, uh, insurance issues that go with that. There's a situation that's occurring a lot more frequently these days. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone will sell the house, the title will transfer, but they get a rent back, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that doesn't always mean that the new buyer uh, really realized that they've now got a rental. Property for some That's a really good time. point. Never thought about that. Yeah, it happens so, a lot. So, what's that all about, Kelly? How do how do people fix that to make it uh, make sure they're insured and covered? Right, and that's an excellent uh, topic is. to bring up because we do have so many people that are in contingencies mm-hmm. of okay, well, I need to sell my house before I can purchase this one, and moving back and forth, and I'm going to be moving out of state, and I need to stay here for a little bit. A good rule of thumb is like 30 to 60 days max. Do we really want to be um, kind of wavering on the new buyer purchases the home, purchases the homeowner's insurance because part of closing escrow is showing proof of homeowner's mm-hmm. insurance. And they're not going to want to see, for the lender's sake anyway, a rental property insurance because you know, you're getting a better rate as an owner-occupied uh, primary residence loan. So 30 to 60 days is really the max that you want to be kind of going between how long those sellers are going to be taking to move out and when the buyers are going to be moving in. Um, so if it's anything longer than 30 to 60 days, they really need to put um, do a change and actually put on a rental property insurance for for that property and the people that are residing in it need to be taking out a renter's insurance policy. Yeah. That's actually one of the reasons why lenders, I mean that's what I do, Lynn. That's one of the reasons mm-hmm. they don't 
want anything more than 60 days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to deal with, they don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, realistically, most people have about 30 days between right. two That's residents true. to kind of have the, have their coverage float between two locations. Um, because it's, it's common to be between two places within mm-hmm. about 30 days, but anything more than the, between the 30 and the 60 day mark, you really don't want anything more than 60 days. And if that's the case, then you really got to change the policies. Well, I, you know, and, and that comes up over and over and over again. And my last two home closings, I know that you helped me out with um, information, Kelly, and one of them was all cash. So that kind of solved itself because without a loan, mm-hmm. you're not demanding insurance, right. although why well, you would buy a house without having some insurance on it at these <laughs> prices is, you know, but right. what can you do? Um, I know we're running out of this, the, this particular segment, so I think we're going to have to do a Part one, part two, what do you think, Joe? Well, yeah, there's so much information here. We obviously started off, wanted to cover more, but, you know, there, we, we, you could see what happened here. We just, mm-hmm. There are a couple of hot-button spots, and some of these are so good. Um, we we absolutely, haven't even touched swimming pools. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, there's so much more. So, yeah, what we'll do, Kelly, is uh, we'll schedule another time and have you back because there's a lot more okay. to cover for sure, isn't there? Uh, yeah, tons. Uh, oh, yeah, tons. <laughs> yeah. Tons more, and I'm happy to come back. Yeah, real quick before we do let you go, if anybody wants more information, where how could they reach you? Phone number, website, let us know. How how is that? Yeah, uh, phone number six five zero seven six three eight eight four four, and my website is farmersinsurancesanmateo dot com. Great. Hey Kelly, thanks again for your time, and we'll have you back uh, in the near future. Sounds good. Thank you very much. I enjoyed right. it. Take care. All the best. Joe right. Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, sitting alongside Bobby and Buddy. Boy, she was good, wasn't she? Yeah, was absolutely. A lot of good I told you. Well, that's, that's <laughs> and wait till you hear part two. Yeah. You'll really be biting your nails. <laughs> that's right. And getting more insurance, by the oh, way. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to duck out for now. Thank you again for more information. You could always go to reradiolive.com. Until next time, take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com. <laughs>